this is what I said, this is what I did, and, you know, and, and I think that's fantastic because you, you get a lot of ambiguity from people. and like, well, you know, you kind of do this, kind of do that, but you're like, no, you know, the opening is this, the preparation's that, the evocation's this, the closing's this, you say this, you do this. Um, where did you kind of put that all together from? You, you, your various Golden Dawn background, readings of, of Dean Kelly, other people that you've worked with, maybe readings or working with Lon Duquette. Where, where did you kind of synthesize that from? Okay, a lot of it comes from my group magical experiences and also uh, the text of the Golden Dawn rituals that can be found in Israel Regardi's book, The Golden Dawn. Um, the core of my opening is what's called the opening by Watchtower, and I adapted Israel Regardi's opening of the Watchtower that's written in a book called Ceremonial Magic. I understand it's out of print right now, but that has a fairly straightforward, um, that has fairly straightforward instructions on how to open the tablets by watchtower or how to open the temple by watchtower and how to get the tablets ready for use. And so I adapted that to my own purposes and certainly uh, being inspired with the Golden Dawn system, I began with banishing, purification, consecration, and then for invocation, I use the opening of the temple by watchtower, and then I do the circumambulation. So I'm taking a basic Golden Dawn format and adapting it to my own needs. And I put in little uh, speeches from the oracles of Zoroaster as far as what to say before you do your purification of the quarters and the consecration of the quarters, things like that. Mm -hmm. As far as the main body of the ritual, uh, it's simply a matter of using the call attributed by the Golden Dawn to that tablet, and then calling the senior. Uh, I don't use the type of circle and triangle uh, system that can be found in the Goetia. These aren't demons, these are angels. And my conception of the difference between demons and angels is that demons are an aspect of your subconscious, of the lower unconscious, of the various atavisms, uh, functions of consciousness that were in use thousands or even millions of years ago, and that demonic ev in demonic evocation you tap into that atavism in the collective unconscious, and then you project that enhanced psychic energy into physical reality in your triangle. With angels, these are aspects of your superconsciousness. And I'm using the word superconsciousness very much in the way that Aldous Huxley used it in his essay, Doors of Perception. Uh, it's the idea that there is, uh, each human being exists in an oversoul, that there's a, a greater consciousness in which the individual exists as but a part. And with superconsciousness, that is an excellent uh, initiatory principle. That's what can take you to new places. That's what can expand your horizons and really give you a psychedelic experience. And I write this overtly in my book, my visions of these angels and the different states of consciousness, the different visions that they uh, help to spawn in me, to initiate in me, uh, is very much a psychedelic experience. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between what I have gone through and reports of people like Timothy Leary and John Lilly. Uh, Leary and Lilly, of course, uh, were psychologists, and they viewed the mind as essentially a biocomputer, and their various methods, some of which are illegal now, <laughs> uh, were meant to 
develop the kinds and states of consciousness that I found myself getting from the Enochian angels. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, my own personal paradigm, I feel, is very much reinforced by uh, the fringes of the scientific community as well as the psychological community. Now, I'm very much um, involved in in the psychological view of things, and so I've I've really I've approached the work of people like Timothy Leary and John Lilly with great interest, and I think I've been able to accomplish with ceremonial magic, uh, with what others have done with the use of psychedelic drugs, at least to an extent. And, of course, ceremonial magic is not illegal, whereas psychedelic <laughs> drugs are illegal. Right, so right. I think I have found my way into the New Age, into the psychedelic experience in a legal way. <laughs> if not quite socially acceptable, still it's a legal way. Well, and, you know, the socially acceptable thing, who you know, that's... That's less of a concern, I guess, than the experience itself. But oh, definitely, definitely. But I'm not dealing with things that could get me thrown in jail for ten years. That that's correct. I mean, there there certainly could be risks, I guess, of of psychological Im impacts, like there are with psychedelic drugs. But at least with the uh, the temporal uh, legal system, you're not going to have any problems. At least right, because not right now. Right, the cops are going to bang down my door because. Um, um, practicing ceremony. <laughs> exactly. Least, not yet. Not yet. Well, um, you mentioned you know some of the uh, sources that you've used, and in your book you actually, um, in your bibliography, talk about a few books. And one of the things I wanted to kind of you know pick your brain is about like what books did you use to to look up things? Like you mentioned um, a number of times in your book, uh, the Jeffrey James book, The Enochian Magic of of John D. So I guess that was a uh, a book that was, uh, you know, very useful to you. You also mentioned the the Zalewski book. Is that the book that you used to to uh, look up the various angel names or senior names, king names, and so forth? Well, actually, I didn't use it for quite that purpose. Um, I had gone to a, uh, a series of classes held locally on Enochian magic, and I have very detailed notes from that class as far as the names of uh, the various hierarchies of angels involved in the tablets. So I was able to use class notes for that. Um, I use the Jeffrey James book and the Pat Zalewski book uh, more in the way of verification uh -huh. uh, to view what some other people had done, what the Golden Dawn had done, just to uh, just to complete my understanding of. Enochian magic and what things like Dee and Kelly had done, what various people in the Golden Dawn had done. Like I said, um, my primary source is Rigardi's works, The Golden Dawn and Ceremonial Magic. Once I, I perfected my ritual, I was able to use my class notes to... Uh, you know, to learn the names of the seniors and the kings that I was wanting to approach and uh, to draw it from there. Uh, certainly for the color correspondences, I was able to turn to Lieber, uh, well, to 777, uh, which is Alistair Crowley's book on the Kabbalah, and it also has something called the Tables of Correspondences, which tell you what colors, what stones, plants, animals, all these things, mm -hmm. how they relate to each other, how they uh, relate to the Tree of Life in the Ten Sephiroth and the Twenty Two Paths. And interestingly, I have uh, quite kind of in an unrelated note, I've put the table, the Tables of Correspondences from 777 into a computer program that I call the Computerized Grimoire, and uh, that's available for sale on the Internet. It's an easy-to-use interactive computer program that anyone can use, and uh, I've solved a lot of the ambiguities in Crowley's tables, 
I, it's, it's a great magical resource. I've used it to help me in my own ritual, and I think anyone can as well. Uh, it can be found at magic.nfshost.com. Okay. Of course, magic is spelled with a K. So if people are interested in taking a look at that website, they can see some screenshots of Sure, we'll we'll definitely put a link to it in the uh, in the show notes. Um, That'd be great. Did you did you have access to any other D books or, or like a True and Faithful Revelation or well, or anything else? Any of the other manuscripts? I have True and Faithful Relation, but ultimately I found it unreadable. It's writ it's couched in Elizabethan English, and I really have a hard time with that. Also, the printing that I have. The uh, the F's look like S's, and it, it just proved to be too difficult to use. Mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, like I said, D and Kelly didn't work too much with the elemental tablets or the 30 ether system. Um, they worked a lot more with something called the heptarchia, which is sort of planetary tablets whereas the watchtower system is the elemental tablets. And, of course, the ethers are kind of like shells of an onion that surround the watchtower system. Mm -hmm. But the, the heptarchia has what's called the bonorum tablets, and they're a whole different set of tablets, uh, and they're meant to planetary planetary angels completely different from what's happening in the watchtower system. Uh, Dee and Kelly did a lot more work with those. Okay. Well, if somebody wanted to get a copy of your book, uh, where would they go to? Well, they could go to Amazon.com or Borders.com or BarnesandNobles.com. Okay, so and, this is like a, a, a very available book. To... Yeah, it, it's on the Internet. Um, you can use any book search uh, Anathema Books online uh, featured a blurb on my book. And, um, you know, uh, with, with Amazon.com, there's a number of reviews of my book, including a review by Lon Duquette. Okay. Uh, so people can read those re reviews in trying to decide whether they want to buy it. Okay, well, I definitely will then put a link to it from the uh, to the Amazon site. And, you know, uh, 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 we could definitely go on uh, for hours on this, but uh, I, 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 we're kind of getting short on time. But I just really want to stress that I, I think it's great that you included with this not just the section, you know, very specifically of what your, your practice was, uh, but also, you know, the, the journal aspect of this, because there's there's not a lot of people talking about what their results are, and you're putting it kind of, you know, right out there, front and center for people to read and go through and judge and and apply this themselves. And I think you should be applauded for that. You know, regardless of of what any kind of uh, results that you get that somebody could then turn around and say, oh, this is just personal, but maybe it is, and maybe that. It, you know, can be the inspiration for people to go out and do it themselves. Uh, yes, that's what I'm hoping. And, um, you know, I record my mistakes as well as my successes. I record the disasters that I went through as well as my breakthroughs. So I wanted to give as open and honest a chronicle of what I've done as I possibly could. Uh, even the mistakes and the disasters were worthwhile. Uh, in the long run, I'm in a much better place than I was when I started. And, uh, you know, when you make a mistake, you suffer the consequences, but then you learn from it and mm -hmm. move on, and you're better off for it. Uh, now, I'd like to also mention that there's an ebook version available. Oh, okay. And that can be, um, that can be found on the Outskirts Press website. If someone goes to outskirtspress.com forward slash Enochian initiation as one word, they can find uh, the listing for my book and there's an ebook uh, edition available. Okay, and I, I'm assuming that's uh, significantly uh, more cost effective than the uh, Oh yeah, the, the, the cost of the book where the retail price is 18.95. Of course, with Amazon.com, there's always better bargains you can get from that. But the ebook is five dollars. Oh, okay. 
So, I mean, that's that's well within the financial reach of, of almost anybody who wants to get the information. 